me uh all right cool man uh where are you at right now i'm in dc okay is that where you live full so, time yeah so um i'm originally from south jersey philadelphia area but i came out to the university of maryland to go to college and i okay. live now in dc right on the water a place called the wharf in dc if you're familiar with dc at all I am. My my uh, older sister actually lives in Alexandria, but she just moved to another nearby town. So I've spent some quite quite a bit of time there, and I actually am a huge fan of Alexandria, like Georgetown. Um, yeah, it was a, it's a really nice area, man. Honestly, yeah, really nice area. Yeah, so you probably you've probably been to the wharf. It's the same thing. So so in DC, yeah. there's Georgetown, which is on the water, and that's yep. across from Arlington. And then there's the wharf, which is kind of a diagonal from Alexandria. Yep. So we spend a lot of time on at. at in old town on king yeah. street we pull up to some of those bars and have a good time there it's it's awesome that's so. awesome yeah i i you know i uh will definitely be back there visiting obviously i'm moving to florida which maybe we'll talk about a little bit uh in this uh little podcast so let me give you a quick history so i started doing this podcast a year and a half ago and i had some really good guests on and it was something i was truly passionate about because i wanted to give value back to people and it was something i enjoyed doing and then obviously life got the best of me popped out one kid now i got another kid um, yeah, I was going to say, man, you've been you've been rolling been, with that. I've been busy. I've been busy. And then obviously, you know, going from kid to kid and then, uh, you know, being at my juice bar and cafe, which, you know, thank thankful that you visited and came and supported me, you know, life kind of got the best of me. So then I kind of rebranded it and um, I, I call it the, you know, the busy dad's guide to wellness and and obviously being a new father, this podcast is, you know, catering to everybody. It's, you know, you know, managing time, entrepreneurship, you know, the, the nine to five corporate structure, anything that is a positive fundamental element in our life. That's kind of what I want to share. And then I started watching you and you just came out of nowhere with the content, which is really interesting. And uh, before we get into it, I just want to really learn about your journey and how this all transpired and what inspired you to put out the content. And uh, if you could just start with, you know, who is Max Alessi? Where, where, where were you born? What was your childhood like? Yeah, hundred percent. Well, I appreciate it. And it's, it's good to reconnect. So it's been a while. I'm glad I got a chance to pop into the juice bar here and there, but it's, it's, we're overdue for a chat. So you know, whether a couple of people watch us catch up, it'll be fun. But um, yeah, I'm actually originally from South Jersey. So I was born um, in Philadelphia. I grew up in South Jersey, about 20 minutes from Philadelphia and about 40 minutes from the Jersey shore. So recipe for an attitude problem. That's where all the, that's where all the vibes come from. But, um, you know, growing up, I was an athlete. I was a student athlete. I played football and lacrosse and, you know, developed my competitive spirit and work ethic primarily through sports. So I was, I was the guy that was, you know, in the gym after class, going to practice, super, you know, motivated, um, kept my grades up so that I had options, but, um, you know, found my fun and passion and working hard for sports. Um, you know, D3 sports and a small school close to home was kind of the original game plan. Had a couple concussions um, towards the tail end of my high school career that took me out of taking that seriously. And, you know, also couldn't really see myself going to the NFL. I'm 5'10 five, five, in Italian. So, you know, um, there, there was an end of the runway there where it was, it was time to get serious about what the next step looked like. So I was fortunate to get accepted into University of Maryland. There was no money to go there, though. So it's an out-of-state school that's, you know, an arm and a leg. But I was like, you know what? That's kind of what you're told to do. So let's let's go play school and see what, what comes of it, right? And um, that's kind of where I got my feet into business and, and, and kind of started my journey. I run a home remodeling company now. Um, but when I was when I got to University of Maryland, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was good at math and science, so I started at, at engineering. Um, because that kind of made sense as the the starting point. Couldn't really visualize what that looked like in the real world, but as a freshman in college, you're you're just taking classes on things that you're good at and um, trying to figure it out. So I got two semesters in, and they're talking about you know organic chemistry and calculus three, and you know building airplanes and or you know electrical things, and that's just not me. Yeah. So I'm like, gosh, shoot, let's peel back the deal, and you know then business became the the deal, but you know, I, I just couldn't figure it out. I wanted to make money. I wanted to be successful. I had no idea what I wanted to do. So switched into economics, which is what my degree is in, because that was kind of the closest thing to money and business that kept me on a four-year path. And 
but that's when I got serious ar ar around looking for opportunity and, and trying to figure out, you know, what the heck I wanted to, to do with my life. So, you know, the bills were piling up. I was, I was used to being busy after the novelty of, you know, school, not having anything to do after class goes away and you, you do all the beer pong and the fun stuff and get to get to socialize. It's like, all right, we need to get serious. So I was looking for a job. Um, and that's where I, I got introduced to the first company that I started working for, which is how we met, which is called College Work Painting. It's an God. internship program. They teach university students how to run every aspect of a painting company over the course of the summer. So, you know, I got hired uh, um, and I went door to door to go get leads to, to, to build my painting business. I sat in houses with binders to close deals and I hired and trained painters to run a little branch of their business for a profit margin as a sophomore in college. Um, and that was my first experience in business. And wow. in the beginning, I had no idea what I was signing up for. I'm like, painting company I don't know how to paint and you know it's kind of weird but it was cool once I kind of you know opened my mind to the opportunity and saw it for what it was which was a, a, an immersive business program you know I was learning a lot about marketing sales leadership and I was able to control my income because it, it was based on you know profit sharing with with corporate so became one of the top interns after I worked through the learning curve and, and decided to take it seriously and then my you know career in business kind of started. So became a district manager, became a general manager, became a VP, which is when I started to become part of those top performer trips. And, and we, we started to, to interact at, you know, in, in, in the nightlife. Um, and then it became time to start my own. And, and that's where Home Genius Exteriors was born in 2018. Interesting. So interesting. I mean, I can't remember exactly. So for those of you that are listening, you know, I met Max at Caesars Entertainment uh, and I worked in VIP services for non-gaming. So you were kind of spun to me. So I, you don't even know, I could, I, I don't even know if you know how I met you or how I ended up contacting you or vice versa. Basically the way it works in the CRM within the casino business, hotel business is when you are classified as a certain threshold or a certain spender, you get spun to uh, a, a VIP specialist. And that's how we ended up interconnecting. And obviously you were younger, uh, not, you know, you were doing the Omnia, all the nightclubs and, and doing more of the non-gaming experiences. So I knew that you were, you know, obviously a successful person. I just didn't know you quite yet. And then we hit it off. I mean, I've met so many people around the world and so many good people, so many weird people. I mean, I've seen it all. And uh, there's very few people I really like to keep in touch with and, ad and admire. And you're one of them. And I'm so thankful that we've crossed paths and met. And it's just interesting because I knew you were doing some things. And it was really amazing to see how humble you were uh, as I took care of you. You were always communicating. Uh, you know, you never demanded anything. And that's one thing I really love about a person's character is their humility. And I hope as you continue to climb your success uh, in the success in the corporate business world, uh, I hope you remain to stay humble because that's a, an amazing trait. Well, I really appreciate that. And it's interesting because one of the things that I learned, um, you know, early in business is that relationships are everything. It's, mm -hmm. you know, business comes and goes. And, but, you know, the people that you meet, your reputation is super important. And, and yeah. taking the time to cultivate relationships with, with anybody is, is the currency of the deal. So, you know, it was interesting. We hit it off. Uh, obviously, you're a Penguins fan. I'm a Flyers fan. So we had the hockey thing, the little yeah, banter yeah. going off. But, <laughs> you know, you made it easy, man. You're, you're, you're a good guy. And it, it was always fun to, to, to stay connected. And it's been a fruitful relationship. Here we are all these years later, still, still having a conversation. So, yeah. So, I mean, let's, let's go. So obviously you were working for a company at that time. And, um, what made you say, like, did you finally look and say, okay, I'm busting my ass. I'm doing good things here. I went door to door. I did the grind. When was the moment that came to your mind that said, okay, I can do things on my own? What, you know, go in, cause you know, a lot of people don't realize like they see the social media. Now they're going to start to see your content. Right. And you've been doing this for years. So like we're fast forwarding to now Max being successful. And then when they see you put out this contact with content with your energy, they don't realize probably the grind and the hard work that you had to do. A lot of people don't realize that when they look at social media, that's the only gripe sometimes I have is the, the gurus out there always forget to talk about the journey. Right. And I just want to know when you decided to pivot and go into that world, because that is a, I've done it and um, I'm still doing it and it is not easy. It's not for the faint at heart. Yeah, it is that balance, right? Because, you know, when you're young and you're ambitious and you don't really have the patience to, and you want it all to happen now, it's very easy to want to just chase the shiny object and all of that stuff. It was seven years for me. So I worked 
all throughout college, kind of building my skill set and becoming really good at what I did. So I was fortunate. I went into business with, you know, partners that uh, I had met in my original business, but they took me seriously because I earned the right to, to be a part of the conversation. So, you know, I started, um, this is year 11 for me. So we're in our, we're going into our fifth, fifth fiscal year in business as home genius exteriors. But I was, I was with that first business for seven years and, um, it was all about getting good at my craft. So learning sales, learning how to teach sales, you know, getting so good at it that you not only could teach it, but help people learn how to teach it and, and just taking such a keen interest and desire and getting great. Then, then I felt confident going out on my own because I had built the skill set to be able to support it. And I also had gotten the attention of, of the partners that I wanted to be in business with where I was someone, I was a worthy partner. So, you know, for me, it's always about who the person that you're becoming is, is the most important conversation that you have to yourself. So I set out in those early, I always knew I wanted to own my own business, but I didn't know anything about business and I didn't, you know, have the the connections or the skill set to be able in my eyes to be successful. So it was, how do, how do we put some points on the board, you know, get really good at what we're doing um, and, and establish some credibility with the people that, that I wanted to eventually, you know, partner up with and do some business with. And, you know, a couple couple years of of maintaining a a high level of success and some opportunities start to open up for you. So it definitely takes patience and hard work. That's for sure. Patience and hard work, and it's nice that when you're a good person, good things happen to good people. And I truly believe when you do right by people and you develop those relationships, I do think things start to happen. And it's just it's a it's an amazing amazing story. So you know, let let's talk about the content real quick. Um, you know, I've tried to put out content. I try. I still try to do it. You have been doing this for a while. Now you're really starting to see some success. You know, can I ask two questions? The first question is, why didn't you start it earlier? Uh, and then the second question, why now? Yeah, you know, those are really good questions. Um, I'm kicking myself for not starting it earlier, right? And, and you know, we're no matter what part of the journey that you're in, in terms of your success path, you know, there's always those those big goals that seem far and a little bit farther out and there's the things that that are in your in your comfort zone so you know when when I was on my in my in the early stages of my career I didn't feel that I had had the content to put out to be able to give value to other people and looking back it was a mistake um if I if I could talk to my younger self I would say put the damn stuff out there let your audience grow with you there's no um you don't have to be the smartest guy in the room to to be able to put content out on the internet um but, you know, there was an insecurity with, you know what, if, if I don't, if I don't have all of my stuff together, or I don't have all the answers, I don't, I don't want to be the guy that's, that, that's, you know, the guru. And, and I think there is a time and a place to be able to give advice, like it, you have to earn the right to, you have to earn the respect of your audience, but there's also nothing wrong with documenting a journey. So why now, um, dude, I wish I would have done it sooner. You know, I, I and uh, finally had a, a mentor of mine, just, I wouldn't have done it if they didn't push me in the pool. They're like, look, Max, you know, what's, what you've got going on is really cool. It's a disservice to the world to not show people, you know, not only the fruits of, of hard work, but also, um, you know, you've got some things to share. Uh, personal brands are super valuable to attracting the right people into your life. What are you waiting for? And it, it it took someone that you know I admired and respected to say, do the damn thing, stop making excuses. And you know, all everybody needs coaches and mentors. You know what I mean? So even even the great ones. So I'm fortunate to have people in my life that that tell tell it how it is. And that was what the catalyst was to 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 get it going. But I've always wanted to, and it was just having that having that moment where it's like, you know what? It's never the right time. The best best time to to plant a tree was what you know ten years ago. The second best time is right freaking now. So yeah. So true. That was, yeah, that so was true. It. I mean, it's funny you say that because, you know, obviously I've, I've been putting out content here and there. I think the biggest struggle whenever you're somebody like me that is trying to get to that goal of financial freedom, truly passionate about what you're doing. I still have such a long ways to go myself. But, you know, the reason why I don't put out as much content is because when you're grinding, and I'm sure you can attest to this, you're busy, man. So it's hard to, to get that camera. It's hard to, you know, you're, you're in a daily grind. So like when you get to your level, when you start to see that success, now it's like, okay, let me get a camera guy. Let me get some, let me, let me hire a videographer. I got a little bit more time to share with people. Would you say that's kind of, kind of a, a, a good assessment of why sometimes people don't start, you know, during the grind? Yeah, you know, and I told myself that for a long time. It's funny though. I'm I'm getting a lot of advice from from folks that have personal brands and and their whole thing is 
you know, you, it, it, you don't always have to be filmed by a videographer to make a piece of content. You know, my buddy was like, when you're in the gym and it's, you know, six o'clock in the morning and you don't want to be there, take the damn phone out and have a conversation about grit. Right. And, or when you're driving and something, a, a thought pops into your head, you know, sometimes perfection is the enemy of done. The advice to me, um, as of late has been pepper in some of the stuff where it's not, you know, perfectly edited. So that there's some relatability to the deal, but yeah, I mean, obviously it, it does get a little bit easier when you've hit momentum where, um, you know, not only is there enough content in your daily life where a videographer can get sound bites with, with all the stuff that you're doing, but also you've got the budget to do it. But I would say that, you know, if, if I was talking to my under younger self that did use that as a reason to not put out as much, um, I probably would have wanted to put some stuff out sooner before I got the, before I was, you know, had, had the perfect setup because I think, you know, people would have enjoyed watching the journey. And although it wasn't ideal, we would have had some momentum sooner than we did, but it, it, I am fortunate to be at a point in my career where it's a little bit easier to, to, to yeah. be able to put things out consistently. And yeah, it's, it's definitely been a blessing in that regards for sure. Well, keep doing what you're doing because I love watching it. Uh, you've inspired me, obviously the one, my favorite one, because obviously I've owned businesses. I currently have a business that I own now, but I also work for a corporate structure. I've worked for Caesars and I've worked for the Palms where are very big corporations. And I have my gripes. I have, there's pros and cons to everything. I have my gripes about the corporate structure. And the one thing that I love that you talked about in one of your videos, I really got my attention was when you said, you know, you know, what, what, what was it? Uh, management, say it, say it for us. Yeah. Management's a title. It's given leadership is earned. Yeah. And that was one of the best things I've ever heard because I've always believed in that, you know, you always want to follow the people that are literally the ones that you want to work for, right? Like the ones that you don't want to let down. And those are true leaders when they look for the best of you. And I used to always tell people when I had a team at the Palms and Seizures, I said, my job is to keep you out of trouble, not to get you in trouble. And then you had those managers that are smart. They're good at the day to day, but it's like, they just want to flex, right? They want to just, you know, show you that, uh, that they're getting you in trouble or, or they're not guiding you. And I always felt like those are the ones that are always the underachievers. And when you said, you know, leadership is a privilege, man, it was, uh, that really hit me just because of the experiences I've had. And I couldn't align more with that, man. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? When did you learn that? Did somebody teach you that? Or is it something that you just kind of figured out on your own? Yeah, well, you know, one of the one there's been a few things that have been fortunate in in my life that have attributed um, that have made a big impact on my success, and it's it's the people that I've been able to look up to. So, you know, starting with my parents and my family, it, you know, it's nice to have that set up. Um, I I always looked up to my parents. I didn't listen to them because they were my parents. I listened to them because I admired them. So it was it started out at at a young age, me me being able to realize, you know, what. Who do I look up to? And then early in my business career, I had leaders that walked the walk. And, you know, it was super inspiring. Like I wouldn't be where I was at today if I didn't see people early in my career when I was a knucklehead 19, 20 year old kid that, you know, I wouldn't have listened to their advice if they weren't walking the walk. And so what I came to realize the advice that I was given early is that success is not like you never get to to an end goal of success it's not something that that you that you achieve or that you kind of you know get your hands up on it's something that you attract by the person that you become so the goal is is not to like check these boxes in terms of goals it's how do i become the next version of myself and when it, as i started to chase you know being a, a high achieving individual whether it's from my character or the results that i'm getting or my routine or my self discipline um that started to inspire other people. And so I studied success for a little bit. I, I was introspective about the people that I was looking up to. And I, I just saw it in my team as well, where, you know, the, the person that it, it is a leader in their own life and is leading from the front is not using their title as an excuse to not do the hard work and is putting in the work to get the results. And is, you know, the, the person that they act themselves to be in, in the front of the room is also that person, you know, when, when you're, when you're having dinner or, or when you're talking to them offline, those are the people that I always wanted to follow. And, and, you know, making that click of that's the secret and becoming that person that deserves to, to be able to lead people and everything all sort uh, you know, comes together. So I think sometimes there's that myth of, I want to get to this next step of my career so that I can have the, the power to tell people what to do. But that only goes so far. If, if people only do what you say because of your title, 
you're never going to really be able to build something great. But if people want to follow you because you're someone worth following, you can build, you can build an empire. And, and that, that was important for me to understand in my journey, because it, it gives you the sense of ownership of, you know what, let me, let me be the person that people want to follow. Let me, you know, not ask people to do things that I'm not willing to do. And it's funny, you know, how much character and you're just, your, your mentality, who you are as a person makes so much more of an impact on your team than your actual, you know, skill at the job. And I encourage people to really take that seriously. Cause in my opinion, that's the game. Yeah, I, I agree with you a hundred, hundred percent. I mean, it's uh, it's truly, and I'm I'm just so happy that you're putting out content, man. I mean, I always knew you were doing good things, but uh, to see this now in full swing, I think it's so valuable uh, to put it out there. And obviously, social media can be so negative, but uh, we need more people like you that are sharing their journey and the success you've had, man. And I'm sure you have people that are you know, looking up to you now within your company. I mean, what are your, what are your thoughts on mentorship? Do you, you obviously agree with it, right? You believe in it. What is your advice to somebody who's younger uh, that is trying to be successful in life and they really don't know what they want to do yet? Cause we've all been there, done that. What is your advice to them when it comes to mentorship? Do you pay for it? Do you, do you join a class or do you just find somebody that you can relate to a real person and kind of just say, Hey, attach myself to that person and learn? Yeah. Um, well, I'm a, I'm a huge believer in, in mentorship and I don't think you need to pay for it early in your career. I pay for it now. So I'm a part of clubs where, you know, at, at, at my level, it's, it's um, a disservice to the people that I want to spend time with, not to compensate them for their time. Like that's just, you know, how it works. But early in my, my career, I found role models um, on YouTube or, you know, through social media, you know, my biggest thing is study people that have what you want, right? Because it's in this world, there's a lot of people telling people what to do. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, taking in data, right? And, and uh, you know, synthesizing those opinions. But, you know, if you want to get good at basketball, you study Messi, you want to get, you know, or excuse me, soccer, you study Messi, you get basketball, you study Michael Jordan, you know, you want to get good in business, study people in business, you want to have a happy family, study people that are doing that thing right. So I've been very intentional with the mentors that I pick and I'll, I'll kind of look and say, you know what, would I follow this person? So there's some people on the internet that I've never met that have made a profound impact on my life through their podcast because, you know, they're, they're good people, they have the success. And I'm like, let me start adopting that stuff. So my advice to the, to the person that's listening, if you're trying to figure it out, um, start listening to content from people that you admire and that you respect and, and keep that in your brain. Because if you're only listening to your, to your five buddies that haven't figured it out, or maybe you have some pessimistic relatives, or that doesn't mean don't love, trust, respect your family, friends, and closest confidants. But again, if they don't have what you want in business, or there's only so much that can be given from, from constructive feedback. So start on the internet, build a network of, of people that you listen to, whether it's audio books, podcasts, you know, um, folks that are moving and shaking in, in industries that, that you're interested in and, and keep that front of mind because you'll start to gain some, uh, some momentum. Um, that'd be a big piece of advice. You did say something that's interesting that about not knowing what you want to do. And, you know, that's a journey that we all go through together. I think it's, you're, it's, there's layers to your life. It's kind of like an onion where like every, you just keep kind of peeling it and, and, and new things are coming. Um, but there is a myth about doing what you're passionate about that, that I like to talk to folks that at least listen to me, you know, doing the, no matter who, who you are, when, when you're chasing something that you're passionate about, there's still going to be things that you don't like to do. Right. And, you know, I'm passionate about making an impact on people. I'm passionate about teaching people how to sell because of what it can do for their life. I'm passionate on leadership development. But, you know, a lot of the stuff that I do on a day to day basis, I don't particularly like. And that's where discipline comes in. Huh. So my my comment to the group is like, you know what, start something. You don't have to have it figured out. You can pivot, but don't let the hard of whatever journey that you're doing talk you out of staying committed for long enough where you're going to have any success. Cause even if you're in athletics, nobody's passionate about broccoli. No one's passionate about sprinting. No one's passionate about, you know, shooting freaking free throws or watching game film. That's just part of the journey. And, and you're not going to be happy all the time on your journey to success. And that gets some young people because they're so, you know, excited about getting to the end result. And if it's not happening right away, it's like, I'm unhappy. Let me do the next thing. You know, you know, who? it's funny you say that. So one of the most underrated geniuses, I think, on this planet, and, you know, and maybe you might disagree with me, is Mike Tyson. I truly believe Mike Tyson's a savant. Um, he's a lot smarter than what people think. And he, I, it's funny you said that, right? I'll never forget this quote he said on Joe Rogan. I had to pull it up so I don't mess it up. He said, discipline is doing what you hate to do 
but not, nonetheless doing it like you love it. And that was from Mike Tyson. And it's so true. Like when you're in business or anything in life, like obviously when you're when you're a professional basketball player, I mean, the hardest part is practice, right? That's the hardest part, getting in the weight room, waking up four in the morning, five in the morning, routine, doing the same thing over and over when you don't feel like doing it. The same applies to your family, to your personal life, to business. And when Mike Tyson said that, I mean, you're completely aligned with what he said. And I, I just, you're, it's so true, so true. Yeah, you know, not not enough people are talking about how hard it is and, mm -hmm. you know, the that it's okay to not enjoy a moment or to feel insecure or discomfort. Like there's a lot of feel good now stuff going on out there. Um, and we get a lot of instant gratification just from the evolution of technology, right? But, you know, it, it, I, I think it's an important conversation for young folks to realize that like, there's going to be periods of your career where you're not super thrilled about most of the stuff that you're doing. And that's not, that's not wrong. That doesn't mean you need to jump ship or, you know, um, not being confident about what you're doing. Like all of those negative emotions are part of any learning curve and, you know, anything worth having in life is going to take discipline where in the moment it's going to suck anyway, whether it's fitness, whether it's diet, whether it's starting a new skill. So I think, you know, learning how to embrace those emotions and, and, you know, not do it anyway, because this isn't, you know, you still have to feel good and, and have that balance between having a, a healthy and productive life. But when you, when you lean too hard on the, I'm uncomfortable, let me take the, you know, dopamine hit or the easy way out, you're never going to do anything great. Cause that's just not how, not how anything important is built. So, so you know, true. the gym sucks, waking up sucks, reading the book sucks, you know, eating a healthy, healthy, healthy diet sucks uh, unless you eat it you know any of your joints because man you, you make that stuff taste really freaking good <laughs> but like the long and the short of it it sucks worse to be on LV. it sucks worse to you yeah. know, not not have a life that that you're you're able to be in control of and happy with so we need a couple more people embracing the suck and, and talking about that it's okay and it's normal and it, it, it is tough to be a high achiever and and you're going through it and that's a good thing it's yeah. not the reason to like you know jump speaking ship. of speaking of sucking what is your thoughts on you know, the, the mantra I quit. And before you answer this question, let me, let me get into this real quick. So there's a lot of people out there who says, you know, never quit and never give up. Right now. I agree with that in life, right? You never want to quit. You never want to give up. You want to always keep pushing to be the best version of yourself and reaching for, for the stars, so to speak. But there was another time I listened to obviously Sylvester Stallone. And he actually went on a rant. And I actually, every once in a while, he'll go on these rants and he's actually very, he has a lot of wisdom. And he was talking about, you know, the biggest, the, there's a big stigma with the words I quit. And he says that there's nothing wrong with saying I quit. I don't know that I can't remember the exact story, but I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit. Basically, he was trying something back in 1970 that wasn't working, that he was passionate about. And if it wasn't for him saying, okay, I quit, it's time to pivot. Basically, Rocky would have never been born. And because of that, he created Rocky, and obviously the rest is history. It's one of the the most iconic actors and most sure. people of all time. So, what is your stigma? What is your opinion on the words "I quit"? Is it need to be a negative thing? Is it okay to quit sometimes if things aren't working, or do you just keep you know going at it until the wheels fall off, and then maybe waste your entire life and never reach your plateau or your true happiness? Yeah, um, you know, it's a tough one. And I think that's why setting goals and having the right cadence of reviewing your activities is super important. Like I hate everything about quitting in the moment if it's an emotional decision to a learning curve or to discipline or right, because that's that's what's going to keep you from hitting almost every single important goal in your life, period. But you're also right, you can't keep doing something that isn't working that would be insane right yeah. so it, at least in my experience right what i always try to do is i want to i want to quit when i'm finished and after i've had a chance to reevaluate i'm not going to quit in the moment because of temporary pain so you know whether it's a project that i'm working on or whether it's i'm going to set you know goals and whether it's quarterly whether it's yearly like you have to give it enough time where if you do maintain the discipline that you said you were going to when you were excited about and it still didn't work there's nothing wrong with making a change what the challenge is is you said you were going to give it six months because that's a realistic timeline for something to get off the ground. Or you said you were going to give it a year and a month and a half in, you're not getting results. And all of a sudden you talk yourself out of doing the discipline. Yeah. That's not okay. Right. So, 
you definitely don't want to hang on forever. I, I would suggest having periodic re-evaluation periods in your life, depending on the task and what, what you know, is reasonable to, to give something and then finish what you start for the sake of not, of not giving up. But you never want to hold on, hold on to something too long where it, where it totally sinks you. That would be, that would be crazy. Yeah. You know, I guess a quick question I have for you too is, um, you know, your business, I think you told me, how much is your business valued at right now? We're going to do anywhere from 70 to $75 million in revenue this year. Unbelievable, right? Just unbelievable. I'm super proud of you. I appreciate you. that. It's a great number. Um, I guess the question I have for you is like, how do I say, I don't want to say this without uh, insulting you, but like, let's just say, okay, you're a smart guy, but like, you're not the smartest, right? I mean, there's always somebody sure. smarter. Um, there's people that work hard. There's people that have vision. You know, like you said, when you find mentorship or you pay for a course, they're not, nobody's reinventing the wheel here when it comes to success. What, what makes Max special? How did you get to where you're getting? And why is it that some people have the heart, but what are they maybe missing that they're not getting to where they need to be? Does that make sense? No, a hundred percent. And I have no problem agreeing with you. I'm not the smartest guy in the world. And there's nothing actually at all special about me that makes anything that I've achieved more ascertainable than 99% of the population in, in, in the United States. You know, I think it, it all comes back to the two things that we were talking about earlier. It's that idea of chasing character and it's, it's having discipline. Like, you know, we, we talk a lot about this business is simple. Um, but it's hard. Like things that you, you have, I'm not a guy that's going to code Facebook. That's difficult. That's conceptually difficult. It's out of my, out of my wheelhouse, right? I'm, um, home remodeling is a simple business, right? We put, put roofs on houses, we replace windows, but you know, waking up early is a simple discipline and it's very hard to do. Drinking water is the simplest thing on the planet. It's very hard to do, right? Um, setting up a routine where you go to the gym consistently after being a high achiever is, is a simple, even if you walk around the block, so there's a difference between things that are difficult and things that are hard to do because they take discipline. So what has attributed to any degree of my success is I win those hard decisions because I have, you know, my why is very strong. The reasons for being successful. Um, I've got a big, you know, a big heart for the people that I care about. I've got a big vision and it allows me to propel through the things that are hard in the moment that help me achieve long-term success. And you do that for long enough, you're successful. So a lot of self-discipline and that comes from having enough reasons to win that out talk the reasons not to not to win right um and you would be surprised at how not complex most areas of success are in this planet so i chose a vehicle that's not a rocket science for a reason but you know nine out of ten journeys that people are going on have nothing to do with the kids not not super difficult to play the guitar, but most people don't get through the learning curve. It's not super difficult to learn how to be fit. I mean, if you're doing power cleans, that's different, but I mean, we're talking about, but it's very hard. So master the hard, it's the discipline game. It's being able to do the repeated actions that lead to long-term success when you don't feel like doing them. And no matter what vector you're in, if you get that down, um, you'll find success in that, in that vehicle, almost guaranteed. Oh, yeah, I agree with you, man. I agree with you. It's, um, it takes a special person, obviously. I mean, when you look at like Michael Jordan, for example, I mean, the way his mentality was is, you know, second to none. And it's just, you know, that's what it comes down to. It, it just comes down to your mentality, your passion, your drive, and willing to do things that you're not, that, that no one else is willing to do. And uh, it's really interesting, man, to watch you do this, man. $75 million continuing to grow. Unbelievable, Max, man. I'm so proud of you, man. It's, uh, you know, um, it, it's it's amazing what you've done. I mean, you deserve I to be it. proud of it. And I know you're not done yet, uh, but it's just fantastic. So, I mean, I think you really gave us a lot of good insight, man. Uh, a couple more questions for you before I let you go here. First, sure. question, we're going to pivot again a little bit. Who was Max, a senior in high school? Who were you? Were you like the popular kid? Were you the sports guy? Were you the nerd? Who were you? You know, it's that's an interesting question. Um, I was a kind of a mix of everything. So I wasn't I wasn't your class clown. You know, my parents did a really good job of keeping me disciplined on school so that I had options. My passions lied in sports and I was definitely not an introvert. So I was I was at all the parties, you know, I, I played I played sports. I was in the in the weight room. You know, I was I, a, a jock wouldn't be the right label because, you know, the negative stigma of like only taking sports seriously and not giving a crap about some of the other stuff. That wasn't me. My passions were in sports. I worked really hard in sports because I liked it and, you know, I wanted to compete physically and, um, you know, I enjoyed that stuff, but 
I also grew up in a household where like, you know what, you want to, you want to do the things that you like to do. You have to do the things that you've got to do. So kept the grades going where, where I was able to have options. So that was me, man. You know, I love to have fun. I love to, I love to party. I love to, to compete athletically because that's, that's who I was. I was a big Eagles fan. Brian Dawkins was my guy. That's why I played safety and slot, um, nice. got into some lacrosse just to do some stuff in the spring. But, you know, I, I, I wasn't the dude that wasn't turning into my homework and, and, and stuff of that nature. So that was me. Good question. That's funny. You, you played football. Obviously I, I played football too. You're going to laugh at this. So I was a, uh, I was a, a street and Smith preseason all American. I won first. Nice. State. I was first state, uh, first team, all state in Pennsylvania, as well as Western PA. Uh, and I hold all the records for my school and guess what position it was. And you, you, should position. Be able, you should be able to guess this. I'm a smaller frame guy here. I'm not big. Kicker. Yep. <laughs> There you go. I knew it. Man. I was a field goal kicker. Italian in you. you had that. You had that football. That's the, the, the real football. The I rest did, of the yeah. world calls football in your jeans, man. Yeah, it, it was fun. It was fun. Um, I, you know, it's funny. I was really good at it, but I didn't have the passion. I never really deeply wanted to do it. I had um, Joe Paterno came to my school. I had a couple people from Temple University, uh, Pitt University. Uh, I was getting some some looks. Um, the, the biggest thing I lacked was I had great accuracy, but I needed to work on my leg strength, but I didn't have the passion. I never really had a desire to be a field goal kicker, but man, knowing what I know now, I mean, they made great money, have longevity, but you know, football was definitely a big part of my life as well in Pennsylvania. Cool. I definitely miss it. So in, interesting. You're a Steelers fan, right? Diehard Steelers fan. I'm, I'm all things Pittsburgh, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even like I'm go. living in Vegas, the Golden Knights have a fantastic story with the Golden Knights. Obviously, I can't believe they won a cup in their first six years. Incredible. Uh, obviously, I root for them when the Penguins are playing, but I will never, ever put anybody over the Penguins, man. Too much pride. There man. you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I believe it. So I will yeah. never hate anybody worse than Sidney Crosby. So that makes I know I, I don't blame you. I, I don't blame you, man. I know he. I don't blame. I don't blame you. Uh, you know, it's uh, yeah. well, uh, hopefully awesome. you guys will miss him uh, when he, when he decides to retire. I'm sure it's been fun, uh, but uh, oh, it has not been fun. So it hasn't been fun <laughs> to be a Flyers fan since I was in freaking high school. But we'll move I past that topic. <laughs> I love it, man. Well, you know, I hope when you come back, so I'm actually leaving August 31st. I'm moving to Florida. So if you're ever in the okay. Tampa Bay, St. Pete area, please look me up. It was time for me to leave Vegas. I did all I needed to do here. Um, the company I work for, which is a technology company, they're sending me over to the East Coast. And then obviously I got my real estate portfolio that I'm truly passionate about my Airbnb. So if you're ever in that area, please, please look me up. Um, and if there's anything I could ever do for you in that area, my goal is to do what I did here in Vegas, just meet everybody, network, uh, and understand what's going on in that area uh, from, from a hospitality standpoint, and just you know, meeting all the right people, the good people. So I will always have my connections here in Vegas. I know you've met some really good people as well. So if you ever need anything, I'm never going to lose that. My company's, the company I work for is based here. Um, so I hope uh, we keep in touch. And I want to do this again, maybe in six months to a year, maybe I'll blow up and, and actually have a real show where you can actually come in person and let's really talk more and see what your progression is. That sounds good, man. Well, I just want to appreciate the time and, you know, I wouldn't have the connections that I do in Vegas without you. And we're definitely going to do some business at some point together because there are movers and shakers in this world and whatever uh, Pascal touches turns to gold. So listen, good I love with your ventures in Florida. Listen, I would be honored. I love what you're doing with the housing. Um, and if there's ever an opportunity for me to help and jump on board, I promise you, I wouldn't let you down. I'd be passionate about it. I'm developing such a love for the real estate and the housing uh, game. So if there's anything I could ever do, please keep me in mind. Will do. Bar is a good man. place to be. So we'll touch base. Have you a good one, it. man. Enjoy the rest of your day and we'll talk soon. Take care, buddy. All right, Thanks, man. Bye.